You might notice that the brightness flits around a bit during the first part of this video. That's because I had my camera set wrong. Apologies and hopefully you'll stick with it. But hi, I'm Edscar, and once again, Divic Designs has sent along some of his 3D printable models for me to have a closer look at. This time I'm looking at some science fiction paratroopers, which happily ties into some work I've done over on Back to the Brush podcast, which I'll mention later on. Specifically, this is the Devic Designs Elysium Rifles Reinforcement Pack number one. And with an original rifles pack and four reinforcement packs, there's quite a lot of variety of models, poses, and equipment to choose from. Oh, and there's ogres, heroes, and motorbikes as well. Even just in the reinforcement pack one, there are quite the array of options, enough to fill out quite a few squads before you notice any duplicates. There's six standard rifle troopers, with the shortened bullpup energy carbine that makes sense for the space age paratroopers to use. Various support weapons including flamers, snipers and missile launchers for the heavy firepower. And with a comms officer, sergeant options and a medic, there's quite a few ways that you could use these. Depending on what game you're using them for, or if they're just for display. I have an upcoming battle report that I played against Ratman where I used a squad of these as Imperial Guard drop troops in Warhammer 40k as reinforcements for my Tanith first and only. In that case, as a veteran squad dolled up with grenade launchers. If you'd like to see how that battle went and how the drop troops fared, it will be coming along in a few weeks because battle reports take a lot of time to do even a basic edit for. Since we recorded that battle report, I've printed off two extra ones just so that I can show painting them up today. One with a grenade launcher, and the other is the medic. Much of the painting here is the same scheme as we painted on Back to the Brush. The cloth of uniform being ochre, and the armor being a bright, vibrant red. But here I'm trying to improve on the painting a little bit, which has been my downfall for 3D printed models due to my low resolution old printer. For the ochre uniforms, I'm using a brown ink wash to darken the recesses, and then I'm coming back with the original ochre paint to recover the highlights, any surface of the uniform that's pointing upwards. For the armour, I'm concentrating in the opposite direction, in a way. Instead of using a wash, I'm going in very deliberately with a dilute black paint as panel lining. I found on some other models that have come off of my 1K screened printer, including Limco's drop pug that I first got the red scheme from, that techniques like wet blending don't work so well, but other techniques like panel lining kind of do. By painting more of these models, I'm learning the differences between the types of material that they're made from, and thus being forced into being a better painter, even if these specific examples aren't painted to the best of my ability. One thing I have to make sure to include is the Rusty Razor's reflective visors. With the Drop Pug, what I thought would be the only model that I'd paint like this, I've decided to have some fun with a cartoony reflective look to the visor, with these strong stripes of white, black, and grey. The response to that is Red Cuffs naming my Drop Troops regiment as the Rusty Razors, and I've taken to that as a blessing. Red Cuffs is, of course, one of the people behind the Drop Troops fan codex that's been in the wargaming news in the last few months, and who we interviewed with Brother Bulpitus over on the Back to the Brush podcast. Link in the description. More importantly, in the form of This Wednesday Just Gone, was a video where Ratman and myself built and painted up the squad of Rusty Razor's drop troops that we used in the battle report that's upcoming. We used a mix of some Games Workshop Cadians and some of Devic Design's 3D printed models to compare the different styles. Once again, link in the description to that if you want a more relaxed, paint-along style of video, that's the one for you. This is becoming one of my most well-connected videos, and I don't like saying link in this description so often, but there's just so many things related to what's going on here. Well, I've finished off these extra two models and got the whole squad completed, so let's directly compare the different sizes to the Cadians. 
And to explain what I mean by sizes, I'll point out this little footnote from Devic Designs to say that to match some of the models, it's better to scale his ones up by 10%. I made a possibly erroneous statement in the Back to the Brush video that these are 25-28 scale, which isn't actually correct. Comparing them to Devic's models here on the left with a Cadian in the middle, you can see they are roughly the same height, but because the Cadian is so heavy on the hero scale, they look bloated and dumpy, where Devic's are far closer to true scale, still hero scale, but only a little bit, but they look skinny and scrawny in comparison. By themselves, Devic models look great, and I'm personally a fan of the only slightly hero scale style, and they look good with male and female heads that the set comes with. Putting them next to each other and they both look a bit silly, so what if I add in the ones that I painted today, which I have scaled up by the 10% as recommended, and we see something interesting. This new model is clearly taller than the Cadian, but the thickness of the arms and the legs are so much closer so instead of looking weird and scrawny, this one just looks tall. For the sake of comparison with some other things, here is a Catachin with Devic Design's Celtic Guardian's cloak, and a Victoria miniature soldier, and a Frostgrave mountain soldier, an Empire militia, bolt action Soviet, a Bretonian peasant, a Bretonian knight, Stormcast and Night Haunt, an Orc, a Goblin, a Cicero Battle, a Corn Blood Reaver and a stomper. Well, not only did that get very silly, but I have to go and take all those pictures now. Oh, why do I do this to myself? So with the two extras that I painted today, and the five smaller Devic models that we've done on Backs of the Brush, I've done away with two of the plastic drop troops to keep them at a ten strong squad. Ten models, plus our friendly drop hug, ready to be used in any game coming forwards, but also I'll be using these as a special police unit in a homebrew science fiction RPG that a friend will be running soon, which is pretty cool and should be a lot of fun. Let me know in the comments what you think of these models and the quantity of links that I've been mentioning throughout the video. So many videos. Especially the link to Devic Designs, uh, Designs, so that you can have a look at the different sets and which ones that you might like to pick up. And if you want the whole army, maybe that's all of them. And if you do buy any, let him know that I sent you. Before I give my conclusion, I should acknowledge some of my biases. So number one, I did not buy these. Devic Designs sent them over for me to have a look at for review for free. Number two is that I'm not necessarily directly involved in any of the drop troops stuff. These are pretty cool science fiction models, but they're just not anything that I'm directly interested in. And of course, three, my 3D printer is terrible, but I've mentioned that endlessly before. But overall, in conclusion, I think these are a really cool set. There's plenty of detail that doesn't even come out on my prints, and so with a better printer, they're still gonna be nicely detailed. With the wide variety of poses in each of the sets, you don't necessarily have to buy everything to have a good range of models, but, with the multiple sets with different equipment, there's so many different options to choose from and easily enough for a whole army, if that's what you are after. And so overall, I can say that this is pretty much a good buy. And with that, I can say goodbye. And with a whole bunch of stuff said here, I'm Edgar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.